Good morning and welcome to another edition of Outside of Genie, where we will be looking at racing today from Fairview on the Poly Track. Today, the 26th of October. In two months' time, this time Christmas will be over. So, welcome to Outside of Genie. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, please click the subscribe now button and ring the bell. Just for those people who uh, are maybe watching this video for the first time, what Outside of Genie do is we um, do a form analysis and then we give you as the punter outsider selections that you can add to your own selections and hopefully should those outside elections, uh, selections arrive, whether winning or placing, that you will be catching the bigger dividend in the preferred, in your preferred play. Now, uh, we're also available on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and our contact details, 083 585 Just quickly feedback from yesterday at Gravel, where I think it was a difficult card, but we still managed to give you four uh, good winners, as well as one outsider that placed second and played handsomely in the first race. We give you Vio's Magic. Um, I see that was eventually back from 7 to 1 to 4 to 1. That one was our outright selection, just for clarity's sake. We do give you three selections per race. The first selection is our outright selection. That can be any price. That is the horse that we think has got the best chance of winning the race. Then we give you um, outsider selections. That is outsider that we feel can either win or place. Um, uh, so, and if they do, then you collect the bigger dividend. Our other outsider selection was number five, Jay's Dancer, which was also our best bet of the day. That uh, was nicely at 12 to five, was five to two in the morning. And you, another outright selection was number two, Shwekweba. That wasn't difficult to find, but at 18 to 10. Then our outsider selection in race five, number two, Carbon Fiber, was first back from 13 to, from 13 to one to 11 to two. And then in the last race, our outsider selection, which was also a value bid, we do give value bids. We say on a value bid, you play, um, you know, you play each way. So that was paid four and forty. So if you play that each way, you would have still been two and forty in the profit. We do offer a daily subscription service. We we send you the analysis. Uh, the normal price is 500 rand per month. Now, if you subscribe now, you're going to pay 200 rand till the end of October. Please note that at the end of October, we are having this uh, the one of two big race meetings in Gauteng. And here I'll be doing a preview of each of the big six races. And that will only be for subscribers. And I let me remind you on previous days, the July day and the Gold Cup day, we did extremely well. On a July day, we gave you five winners, um, of which the last two was a double, a hundred to one double. And also on Gold Cup day, we gave you quite a few uh, winners, including the winner of the Gold Cup, which was 66 to one. So um, let me just move down further. So if you do subscribe, you get a race by race selection. Outright winner and two possible outsider selections. Two daily recommended all to come doubles. Value bits to play each way, normally six to one. Base bit of the day. We don't give you odds on an eight to tens and nine to tens. That you can find yourself. You don't need outside genie for that. But we try and give you decent value. We have given um, as high as 13 to two. The other day at the Vol, we gave you a nice base bit at four to one. And we give you trifectas and quartet selections, which you can use as, or maybe change it a little bit, put your thing, uh, add on your thing, your numbers, the, your selections that you fancy. And the same with the pick six and the PA. Yesterday at, the, at, at uh, Gravel, we would have had the pick six, but unfortunately our winner was scratched. And with hindsight, I should have put in the Anzo last year, which I didn't, I put in the outside and then, yeah, if, I, if you took that and you added that number one, you would have caught the pick six. So if you do subscribe, you will be added to a WhatsApp group where you will be receiving every day. You will receive a, a, um, 
a, a one page selections where we will give you all the um, race by race selections out, uh, outright and to outsider selections. You get the pick six PA, trifecta quartet. You get your value and base bet of the day and then you're all to come. So let's now move on to the business of racing today. We, we're racing from Fairview on the poly track. And um, yeah, I look at the card and it's a nice card, some interesting races, sometimes not big fields, but quality horses. And that is what, what we like. So I think today will be a very interesting day where we kick, kick off of a maiden plate over 1200 meters, the first race. Sorry, I just want to get back here to, to the first race. And let's have a look at the betting. Here we have, here we have number five, Winter Prince, Winter Peace, Even Money, Mystic Tulip, 33 to 10, Carola, 7 to 1, Rain Cap, 10 to 8 to 1, 10 to 1 is for, for Zondo, 16 to 1, Wonder Woman, and Rhapsody Fab, 22 to 1, Step Up Baby, 40 to 1, She's a Being, Sheena Being. So let, we, um, we just quickly um, just want to make the mention the following that um, in order for me to keep the video in a reasonable time because people are complaining if it's too long, I give my first selection, my two outsider selection, and then maybe I discuss one or two other horses. So here we're going to go for number five, Winter Peace, which ran an improved race behind Red Berry last time out. And Michael van Rensburg, Marco van Rensburg on board, drawn eight, and Winter Peace looked um, like a fair bet in this race, not a strong field. Outside of selections, we're going to look at number one, Rain Cap. Rain Cap did disappoint last Monday in the same race where Winter Peace was running. Winter Peace was also running in um, race for Beyond Red Berry. And um, number one, Rain Cap. Um, was drawn wide in, as in both his races, 10 out of 14, 10 out of 11, but today drawn a little bit better at seven, and I'm sure he's going to be there when the photos are taken. And also outside of selection number three, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman has been running there and there about four lanes, there just under the lane, four lanes, five lanes, and um, from draw two can probably run a, a, a big race, um, winning it or at least place. Yeah, so that is in race number one. Let's move on to race number two. We have another maiden plate over 1,400 meters. Here the beating is as follows. Number two, stunning, 19 to 10. 7 to 2, Prenzina, leader of the pack, 4 to 1. 8 to 1, Queen Louise, electric daisy, 15 to 1. And let's rock 15 to 1. 18 to 1 and better the rest. Now, uh, yeah, let me quickly just discuss the favorite number two, Stunning. Number two, Stunning must have a, a decent chance, Lyle Houston riding. I see he, he rides a lot for straight on today, so I take it that he's getting a lot of, gonna get a lot of rides and chances for Jock straight on riding for him. Yeah, this horse ran an improved race last time out behind Watercracker, but the race before that uh, came from Gauteng and, um, God, didn't do much. Has been there and there about something running seconds and third and fourth. Last time out running a second behind Watercracker. Over the shorter distance, the 1400 will suit. So num from draw nine, must have a chance. Number one, Princess um, Zina, also an ex Um was four lengths behind in its first race, but probably the 1400 meters would also suit. Also a well-bred individual not without a chance. But my first selection is a nice outsider in this race, and it's a three-year-old uh, filly, uh, um, but unfortunately drawn thin, and that is gonna be a bit of a, a drawback, but this horse has run some nice races, and it's always running on well. You'll see uh, one place ran on fastest 400 to finish, their fastest 400 to finish. Now today it's going the first time over the 1400 meters, and I'm hoping that that were you know, maybe the distance that the Electric Daisy is looking for. In my other outside of my outside of selections is number eight, Queen Louise. Also Zitzman was raised an uh, inmate and Ferrari on board from draw five. Also ex Durban horse and now running in, um, in PE. 
that run in the red berry race, ran four, so can improve from there. Also, the 1400 might suit better. And my other outsider selection in this race is number 12. Sylvia Louise at a very long price. It's a Silvana out of our Mafti me, and I really like that kind of breeding. This horse debuted over 12, over 1200 meters in September. They didn't run a bad race, uh, 23.7, 400 to finish, which is not bad, uh, but probably the 1400 will suit better. So look for improvement to include in all your play. Then we move on to race number three. Race number three is a merit rated 74 handicap, class D, average merit rating 67. Let's look at the betting. Here the betting is number four, Thomas Tucker, 16 to 10. Reach for the line, three to one. Five to one, the master. Five to one, latest crazed Apollo Rock. And all the sevens, 14, you and me, 33. And optimum is scratching. Now in race three, my first selection is number three, latest craze. We did say that the average merit rating in this race is a 67. Now, if you have a look at this, this horse in his last three runs, he ran in higher divisions, 74, 74, 73, now down to a 67, which he did run before. And I do think if I'm draw two, like this case, must have a decent chance to win this race. Then my outsider selection in this race is number one. I've just got the one, and that's the master. Uh, also, I would think that um, the master over this... Um, 1400 meters would, would also improve and has had a couple of runs here since relocating from up uh, from, from Durban, the Dennis Dryer stable, Gavin Smith and Michael von Rensburg combination. Um, yeah, I do think that today this horse can be involved in the finish. If you can see, this was also way down in class. If you have a look here, 82, 94, 92, 78, 72, 73, 70 has come down in a merit rated from 85 to now a 75. So the master, I believe, definitely a, a huge runner in this race. Thomas Tucker has also, um, has also got a chance to run a nice race, also in a little bit of higher division, but has run um, a, a good races recently, not to be left out for others from draw five. Reach for the line, um, now, if you take a line, Thomas Tucker and reach for the line, reach for the line, has got a six kilogram turnaround on Thomas Tucker. So on four, on, on based on handicapping, I'm just saying Thomas Tucker can't beat reach for the line because last time out, he was 1.75 links behind Thomas Tucker. Now six kilogram turnaround, you see he was carrying 59 and a half and Thomas Tucker was carrying 57. That's two and a half kilograms. Now he's getting a, a kilogram, a half a kilogram less. That's three kilograms plus the minus four. It says it's actually seven kilograms less for a 1.3 uh, uh, beating. He, uh, number four, Thomas Tucker is going to find it hard to, to be. The only reason I think Thomas Tucker can uh, finish in front of reach up for the line is that if this dog, if this jockey still goes, uh, goes to clappers, like it did last time, this horse will have no chance. But if they can restrain this horse and you know run him at a decent pace with that light weight of of 50, 52 and a half, then reach for the line can definitely be a contender, a contender in this race. So let's now move on to race number four, which is also a merit rated 90 handicap, nice class B, average merit rating 88. And here you have some of the better horses in PE competing. Marmara C90, 20, 7 to 1, second request. Pilos 15 to 2, B Duven 18, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, and better. Now, this horse is now, has never lost in PE. Marmara C, she's got in the course five runs, five wins, has now won six in a row, has never been beaten, but. Unfortunately, um, I am an old punter and I know for a fact that sometime that run comes to an end. Um, will it be today? I don't know. I can't see it happen. This horse wins so easily. You know, if you don't have a look here, he just sits there, fifth, nine, six, fifth, and the next moment he's in the race going away. And I can't find really a horse that can beat it except this horse. 
number two secondary quest, which is a top horse, has run against the best in the country, front and center, O Susanna. So will number two second request be the horse that lowers the colors of Marmara Sea today? Only the race will tell. And also, Philos is also a horse that's always dead in the area, but also ran in a little bit higher division last time out. Now uh, can also be involved in a finish, but I would think uh, against the stable mate running for minor money, that is for sure. So um, let's move on to the next race. We're not going to dwell too much on this. Um, and the next race is race five. Which is a middle rate of 90 handicap at a thousand meters. Class B, middle rate of 88. Race five betting is as follows. Number one, Big Bay, 16 to 10. Dime, 19 to 10. Dolphin, 4 to 1. Carbon, Atom, 5 to 1. Boxcar, 11 to 2. Via Scar, 25 to 1. Now, race five, we're sitting at class B, 89. Now, Big Day, last time out, one in a, in a B. 90 and 94 before that, um, you know, and um, getting the minus four is carrying 65 and a half, but getting the minus four. And if you take a line from the Sullenberger, carbon atom cannot beat this horse. Um, also, Daimi cannot beat this horse that finished behind him last time out. There's no, can't beat him even on the way turnaround. And the rest of the, of the, um, uh, horses I don't see in the same class. So for me today, Big big Bay, I'm not going to dwell too long on this horse. Best race, uh, the, the, the best bet on the card today, 16 to 10, help yourself. Let me move on to the next race, which is race number six, where we have some interest, something interesting which I'll tell you about now. So here the betting is Stranger Danger, 5 to 10. 4 to 1, Lumine. 7 to 1, for luck's sake. 14 to 1, the cup, the, the carpenter. Karokum, 16, 20 to 1, and longer the rest. Guys, I would be very careful today if um, I were you, and before I put my money on number one, Stranger Danger, at 5 to 10, because there's something that I cannot understand um, Michael von Rensburg runs twice with this horse. Okay, Leo Makotswa uh, has won with him with, at four and a half lengths. Looking House hasn't won, hasn't won yet. Ran two seconds, got beaten by four Lux at last time, giving six kilograms. Now Louis is back on this horse, and von Rensburg is running is now on strain on for luck's sake the horse that beat him last time and now he's carrying 58 um so he got he was carrying they got six kilograms for a 0.25 now stranger danger is carrying 60 again so there's now only two kilograms so he got penalized four kilograms so I don't know how good the carpenter is, but I, I mean, I've been racing a long time. The carpenter can't, um, sorry guys, I just want to get back to the carpenter here. Uh, for luck's sake, sorry, I'm getting the confused of all these horses from the Katniss. Based on the weight turnaround, for luck's sake, can't beat um, Stranger Danger. But now the Van Riesberg is riding the carpenter which ran in a lower division last time out and did win again Basili Santos, but I can't see the carpenter beating um, Stranger Danger. And then here we have Louis, Lyle Hewitson riding a total horse, which I think has got no chances, but will probably win the race because I say so, plus a half called the Greek soldier. So it looks to me like Katniss is going to be the kingmaker in this race, it looks to me. Um, but, I mean, based on uh, handicapping rules, uh, for luck's sake, can't beat Stranger Danger. So I don't know why. Um, did, are they throwing uh, Lekotswa, uh, Louis Makotswa a bone because he won the horse 
previously or what the situation is, I'm not sure, but I'm getting nervous when I see things like that. So let's go to race number seven, which is a conditions plate. And here we have a class B average metal rate in 92. Race seven, number two, Captain's Princess, three to one, 53 to 10, Carioca, Miss Orange, four to one, Montreal, Miss four to one, Medicino, four to one, eight to one, Captain Anne Bonnie, and 12, 25 to one, Miss Honey. Now I'm telling you for me, this is the most open race on the card, and my, my advice is put your field in your pick six. My first selection is Montreal Mist. Montreal Mist is no donkey. Montreal Mist has run 12 runs, three races, and although it costs 400, 700 rand as a year, the unfortunately didn't um, fulfill, but still managed to get 400,000 rand, and has run against some decent horses. Even here, look at it, 101, 97, 86, 89, now finding itself in PE, can this be another Mamara, Mamara C? I don't know, T. Gould riding, five to one. That's my selection. Then my other selections is um, number six. Uh, number six has got six runs, two wins, two seconds, and a fourth. And it's also one of the better handicap horses. Has also been running against this, this, this horses. And I do think six can be involved in the finish as with number seven, Ms. Honey. Ms. Honey is carrying 52 and a half minus four, 48 and a half. And at one stage, Ms. Honey in the Cape Town was a talking horse. Uh, they were expecting a lot of her. I think she won a small future, if I'm not mistaken. But yes, she ran in a, in a future behind Cockney's Pride in a grade one. And before that, she ran in Alan Robinson and now finding herself here in Cape in PE and has been running the in and bounce. Last time out, I'm not sure what happened there, but I do think carrying this weight will can definitely be involved in the finish. Then we move on to race number eight, which is the Phillies and Mears 85 handicap, class C, average minute rating 82. Nippy Sweetie, 16 to 10, 2 to 1, Wallace Simpson, Pierre's Bliss, 7 to 2, 8 to 1, Tony Jet, Sao Paulo, 14, 16 to 1, Beyond Bend Temptation, and 20 to 1, along with the rest. Now, here's a horse. Nippy Sweetie, four runs in a row. Last two was written by Ch Shane, and he won, and then two was won by Nglovo. Nglovo is back. And Greg Shane decided, no, I'm going to ride this horse, Wallace Simpson. Now, Wallace Simpson, I think, might be a fair horse. Um, but definitely, I can't see him beating Nippy Sweetie at this stage. Nippy Sweetie is still improving, hasn't done anything wrong. And I do believe that we'll go, she will go in today again. And it's a Duke of Marmalade filly. They say this Duke of Marmalade fillies are much better than the Coles. Nicely bred by Western Winter Meal. And also, it's the same as Mamara uh, C. The one moment she's sitting behind, the next moment she just arrives. And I do think it will be the case today, all right. She's a little bit up in class today, but it looks to me like she's still improving. So it's going to be an interesting deal between them. And in, in, in the middle of the sandwich, You've got Puris Bliss, who's also uh, on a hat trick and has also run against some decent opposition. So this is going to be a nice race. Tony Jett, also uh, from the Creep Stable, also in with a chance, I would think, T. Gould from, from draw one, has also run some free races lately. So very interesting race. Then we move on to race number nine. Race number nine is a... Um, 1600 meters, Phillies and Mayor 70 handicap, class D average, minute rating 66. Let's have a look at the betting. Here we have uh, a number two, number six, Frosty Rain, 13 to 10, Mistress of Means, 3 to 1, Forget of Keith, Forget of Girls, 5 to 1, Cyber Security, 8 to 1, Blood Dew, 16 to 1, uh, 10 to 1, 16 to 1, or Aces Queen, 25 to 1, and longer the rest. Now, here my first selection is number one. 
we do say it's class D average minute rate in 66. Now, yes, Mr. Dove means when he beating Wallace Simpson, don't ram too far behind Nebby Sweetie in a class C 73. Yes, she now finds it in a class, finds herself in a class D 66. All right, carrying 60 kilograms, which is not bad. I mean, she is running down in class. And I think that this is a, a, a smart horse, and I think it's going to be tough for this three year old, you know, just won a maiden frosty rain, although by um, four and a half links. But I mean, five runners, nothing. There's no, no there's nothing there. Uh, nothing has happened with a horses behind him. So maybe he beat the blind school by five links, but now he's running against some decent horses. So I think Frosty Rain is going to have definitely opposition from number one. And I expect number one to perform well and also be there when the photos are taken. Unfortunately, for Ghetto Girls, drawn 11, but can also be involved um, in the finish. There has been there and there about second behind all, uh, behind Tony Jet just after breaking the maiden. So that can come in. Also, I want to go down to number eight, um, which is La Deuce. Always run there and thereabouts. Again, Lyle Hewitt's and drawn four. Has been uh, has been running places, um, and I think over the 1600 meters has one and placed one win, one second, two fourths, two thirds. So it can also be involved, and also then number ten, which is um, Asia's Queen. Now Asia's Queen always slows, ran on well, ran on late, and with the smaller field today, I think you know, and drawn five can also be involved in the finish. And, and I do believe it has the ability to win this race. It's not out of chance because um, I see this here and his dad's horse and the Aces Queen can definitely be uh, involved in the finish. So that brings us to the end of our preview. I hope that I could point you in the right direction. And as I always say, break a leg.